morning. This lecture video is going to give you an overview of the structures of the digestive system, how the tissues are arranged within the GI tract, and some overall general functions of the digestive system. So the digestive system is going to be made up of two categories of organs. There's the organs that are going to make up the GI tract, which is going to be organs where food physically passes through. So your mouth, your pharynx, your esophagus, your stomach, small and large intestines, rectum, and anus. And then there are the accessory organs which contribute to digestions, usually by the secretions that they dump into the GI tract, but that food doesn't actually go through. If we were to look at a diagram here of the different organs, you can kind of see on this side is the organs of the GI tract, and on this side are the accessory organs. So starting with the oral cavity, which would include your teeth and mouth, this is going to be where mechanical processing occurs. So in digestion, there are two types of digestion. There's mechanical digestion and there's chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion is the physical breaking and mixing up of food, and chemical digest digestion is chemically breaking down food for its specific nutrients. So the mouth is going to have a lot of mechanical digestion. Our teeth and tongue are ripping and mixing and um, breaking apart food physically. Your pharynx, after your mouth, it goes down to your pharynx, which is going to connect to your esophagus in both of these organs, you will have muscular contractions that pull the food down through those organs. Then you'll get to your stomach where there's more physical mechanical digestion because acid will break down food, but there's also chemical digestion that's going to start to take place from the enzymes and the acids that are being produced. There's a lot of muscle contraction so that again the food will continue to be physically broken down as well. Small intestines is where most of your chemical digestion is going to take place. This is going to include um, or happen because of enzymes that are being secreted into this organ. The absorption of water will occur, organic substrates, vitamins, ions. And then the large intestines where any undigested material will be dehydrated and compacted to form feces, which will leave the body through the anus and rectum. Accessory organs include your salivary glands, which will secrete lubricating fluid that helps break down carbohydrates, your liver, which secretes bile and also is going to play an important role in the blood supply of your digestive system, which we'll get to in another lecture video, your gallbladder, which is going to store the bile that's produced by the liver, bile is used to help break down fats, and your pancreas, which is going to secrete enzymes into the digestive tract to again aid in digestion or absorption of nutrients. So those are the organs of the digestive, digestive tract. Now, interestingly enough, the digestive tract layers, or the digestive tract is going to be made up of like a, a canal, like where food actually passes through. And then it will be made up of four different tissue layers. So, and these four layers are found throughout the GI tract. Some of the specific cells that make them will differ based on whether or not it's in the mouth or whether or not it's in the small intestines, but there are always going to be these four layers in this order. So starting from the lumen, which is going to be right here, that's going to be the cavity or the canal where food actually passes through, you have the mucosa, then you will have the submucosa layer here, the muscularis externa, which is going to be two layers of muscle, and then you'll have the serosa, which is going to include a connective tissue layer as well as the peritoneum. Remember, that was the serous layer of the digestive tract way back in our histology unit. If we look at each of these, again, this picture kind of blows it up again, you can see this mucosa layer. The mucosa layer is going to actually be made up of epithelial cells, connective tissue, and also muscle tissue. So it's pretty complex. It's also referred to as the mucus layer. Then here you can see the submucosa layer. Its job basically is to connect it to the muscular layer here. And then again, here's the serosa. I kind of like to draw it out like this so that you can kind of see. Here's the lumen, so here's where food would be passing. This mucosa layer is going to actually, you know, line that lumen. 
Then you have this submucosal layer, which would be in here, the muscularis external layer, which is made up of circular muscle, longitudinal muscle, and then serosa. And you'll see this again when we talk about nervous system innervation. So moving on, looking at each of these layers of tissue, so the mucosa again is the inner lining of the lumen of the digestive tract. It's also called the mucous membrane because the mucus is production is it's kind of its main job. It's made up of epithelial tissue, which in the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, and anal canal, the epithelial is non-keratinized stratified squamous. This is important because remember stratified means more than one layer. And we want these areas in high physical stress to have more than one layer in order to help protect the layers underneath it. So however, when you get to your stomach and intestines, this layer of epithelial tissue is actually just simple columnar. So even though the layer is found everywhere, the cells that make up this layer are going to be different depending on whether or not they're in areas of high physical stress or not. There are ducts of secretory glands that will open up. There is also the lamina propria, which is going to contain numerous blood and lymphatic vessels and help transport nutrients throughout the alimentary canal to the other parts of the body. So it plays a really important role in making sure that all of our cells get the nutrients from the food. And then there's also a thin layer of smooth muscle, which is called the muscularis mucosa, which job is to um, pull the mucosa of the stomach and small intestines into folds. And these folds, which we're going to be lined with the villi, and we'll talk about this in a different lecture video, increases the surface area available for digestion and absorption. So they're going to move these villi and microvilli. The submucosa layer is dense irregular connective tissue, and its job is to bind the mucus layer to the muscularis externa, it contains blood vessels and lymphatics. It will also contain one of the two plexuses that will provide the nervous system stimulation to the digestive tract. It will supply the submucosal plexus, and its job is to help regulate secretion and motility. So in the next lecture video, we're going to talk about the nervous system innervation of digestion. And the two plexuses, the submucosal plexus, then will enter into that submucosal layer. The muscularis externa is two layers of muscles, an inner circular and outer longitudinal layer, and its job is to function and propel. And it will also contain the second plexus or nervous system supplied to the digestive tract. And its job is to basically, um, motility is to move things through the digestive organs. And then last is the serosa. The serosa is going to be present only in regions of the alimentary canal within the abdominal cavity. It contains a layer of visceral peritoneum overlaying or sitting on top of a layer of loose connective tissue. So instead of the serosa, the mouth, pharynx, and esophagus have a really thick um, covering of collagen fiber called the adventitia. And these tissues serve to hold the GI tract in place near the ventral surface of the vertebral column. So all of the serosa membrane, the peritoneum, will be found all along those abdominal organs. However, in the mouth, pharynx, and esophagus, instead of having the peritoneum, you have this adventitia. So those are the tissue layers that make up the digestive tract. There are six functions of digestive system. There is ingestion, where food is going to enter into the mouth. We cannot make our own food, so we have to bring food in in order to get our nutrients. There's mechanical processing, which is going to be the physical manipulation that's going to break down food, increase surface area, and tear food apart. Digestion, which is the chemical breakdown of food to a size where it can be absorbed into the body. Secretion, the release of water, acids, enzymes, and buffers into that lumen of the GI tract. Absorption, which is taking all of those nutrients that's found in the food as it passes through and then bringing that food into the interstitial fluids of the body. 
and then excretion, which is the elimination of waste products or undigested material. Here's a quick diagram, again, showing these different parts. So you've got the ingestion, which will obviously occur here in your mouth. You have the propulsion, which is going to be moving that food through, swallowing peristalsis, which will be pushing it down through the pharynx and the esophagus. The mechanical digestion, which is going to involve the chewing, the churning of the stomach here as it mixes up all of that food. Segmentation, which will occur in the small intestines. Chemical digestion, which is going to occur again in the small intestines. Its secretion also occurs in here. The absorption stage, where we're going to get all of those nutrients absorbed into our blood vessels and our lymph vessels. And then down here would be the elimination of waste or defecation. So that's a quick overview of the digestive systems, the organs involved, the tissues, and how they are arranged, and its overall function.